Yeah, all of seven o'clock, and we will begin. Welcome, everybody. We're going to call the uh, meeting to order, and if you don't mind, taking the roll. Chair Wendy. I am here. Vice Chair Magana. Present. Commissioner Zizzo. Commissioner Westlaw. Commissioner Reyes. Here, present. Right here. Commissioner Jolly? Here. Commissioner Ramos? Here. Commissioner Brown? Present. Commissioner Allen? Here. And we have to Thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to our last meeting of the year. We're going to move on to the consent calendar. Can I have a motion to approve A and B of our uh, minutes, regular meeting, and a lot of other meetings <laughs> as we get in the forum? Thank you. Can I have a second? Okay. okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody need to abstain? Okay. Move on. Any public records? Anybody would like to make any public comments who are here in the audience? All right. We're moving. We're moving. We are now in discussion for item five, discussion action item. We have an informational item. We're very excited about our staff highlight at Berryessa. Um, I love this library. I've actually been to it quite a few times. Um, so we're going to have a presentation. Hi everyone. My name is Tammy Tran and I am the senior librarian at Berryessa and Oviso Library. So it is my pleasure to introduce Berryessa branch staff and share a bit of information about Berryessa Library Community and our beloved branch. With me today are some key members of branch staff that make this branch such a happening place in this community. They are Melissa Datu, full-time librarian, Sapa Gao, full-time librarian, Anna Zinovich, part-time librarian, and our library assistant, Mario Pasi. And of course, this branch would not be functioning at the optimal level without the contribution of the entire clerical team, which consists of clerks, pages, and aides as well as the support of our amazing friends of the Berryessa Library, whose representative is here tonight with us, our volunteers, and our library executive team. So let me start with a couple of fun facts about the Berryessa branch. So Berryessa is well known in the library system for our inflatable decoration. <laughs> During the holidays, we enjoy sharing and celebrating cultural holidays with community members. And the inflatables create a festive and welcoming atmosphere for library users. More recently, thanks to one of our executives or two executive team members here, we're also known for hosting bunnies from the San Jose Animal Care Center. Pets and animals are big hits with Berryessa family. Um, the biggest turnout that we recently had at one of the bunny programs was approximately 105 participants. And at our summer learning kickoff event on June 3rd, we had roughly 253 visitors inside the Little Petty Zoo tent. Yep. And now that the fun facts are done, we're moving on to branch facts. So Berryessa Library is within Council District 4. We are a seven-day service branch with a total of 48 hours, service hours. We have 21 staff members on the team, which is roughly 11.8 FCE. Um, because I am in charge of both library locations, so I only count myself as 25. And then we have our librarians, our library assistant, as well as 
for pages and page. All right. Now the serious stuff coming, guys. But before Anna dive into the statistics on the community demographics, we want to share a couple of images of our Berryessa Library customers with you. These images capture big turnout in support of Sunday hours and cultural celebrations such as the Lunar New Year. Next, Anna will take you through the numbers from our community demographics and usage statistics. Anna, take it away. Thanks, Denise. I'm Anna Dunevich, and I will briefly review our community profile. The Duryasa branch serves an ethnically and culturally diverse community. Indeed, according to 2020 census data, about 57% of the population in our service area speaks more than one language. The most prominent languages are Chinese, Vietnamese, Tagalog, and Spanish, where Chinese and Vietnamese communities comprise roughly the same share of the total population. Around 21% of district residents are 19 or younger, and about 16% are seniors 65 years old and ethnic. In the next slide, I will present the library usage statistics in this post pandemic era. The Riesa Library is a fast paced and high circulation trend. As we have seen in the previous slide, more than one fifth of the population is a youth, which may, which may explain the high circulation numbers for children and teens material. To present the current data, we chose to use the period from May 2022 to May 2023 to capture the most recent and relevant usage statistics. During this period, more than 178,000 persons passed the library gate. The population number showed a 24% decrease compared to the year 2018-2019 and an 18% increase over May 2021-2022, which was the year of the pandemic. And now I'm finally over to Melissa who is going to introduce our program. Thank you, Melissa. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Melissa, and I oversee our early education programs as well as our adult services and programs. So for early education, it focuses on children ages 0 to 5 and caregivers of all backgrounds. And here at Berryessa, we offer high-quality early education programs and resources, such as our family story time, music and movement, and baby lap kids, which every week can attest to having more than 50 plus in attendance. Our participants learn new ideas, skills, and possibilities, and our safe spaces help little ones explore, play, connect, and grow. For our adult services and programs, and as the coordinator of volunteer engagement, I work directly with our adult volunteers. And here at Berryessa, we are extremely fortunate to have amazing and enthusiastic volunteers that facilitate and lead such wonderful programs, such as our Yellow Conversation Club, as well as our Tai Chi Club, Line Dancing, and our monthly book club. I'm handed over to Sabah, who will cover our other questions. Hi, yes. So my name is Sabah, and I oversee a, the expanded learning program, which is for uh, grades, uh, well, I mean, or basically kindergarten to 12th grade, and our college and career program, which you know stretches from teens until even adults. An example of expanded learning would be our Science Day, Math Festivals, and various coding programs. And a co our college and career programs is comprised, uh, we had a community service program uh, that told teens about community service opportunities, and we are creating a coding program for teens that actually teaches job skills with coding. Um, as for school outreach, uh, our library basically is responsible for every school except one in the various Union School District. We have a lot of schools and child care centers, and so it covers uh, children from kindergarten, from pre-K all the way to high school. Our teens read as a teens reach coordinator. I work with uh, our teens who are interested in 
developing leadership, teamwork, and problem solving skills. Uh, they have put on an annual program since 2021, which included a Comic Con, a chalk art celebration, and most recently a Science Day. And the Seed Library is run by our library services volunteers and a Seed Library volunteer who is developing leadership skills. So we are a library that has the ability to offer numerous programs for all ages, which allows us to connect with our local community members and partners. We have many opportunities to increase and strengthen such connections through engagement with our community, where we learn about their needs and concerns. Based on the information we've gathered, we've created a few branch goals. First, we would hope to strengthen in collaboration with schools and community partners. And we are doing this um, by working with the Piedmont Middle School Community Advisory Council and their school librarian to develop after school programming for their students. In addition, we're working with Piedmont Hill High School, their cloud for school librarians to increase attendance for our same program. Another goal that we have is to increase partner and volunteer presented inclusive STEM and after school programs. We're currently working with teams to create STEM programs such as Science Day, and we'll encourage teams to brainstorm activities during reoccurring cultural programs. Another opportunity that comes to mind is our Reading to Children program that we plan to launch next month. I recently recruited a volunteer who would love to give back to the same community that welcomed her and her family when they first arrived in our country. She recalls how much she enjoyed attending story times and expressing interest in becoming a reader to children. And we'll present this program in both Mandarin and in English, addressing the needs of our Chinese speaking community. And it comprises about 18.9%. By participating in the Reading to Children program, it's a great way for children to develop their imagination and spark a love for book reading and learning. Finally, we hope to provide more programs and services for the underserved. We are increasing collaboration with Piedmont Middle School, which is a Title I school. We are working with Team 3 volunteers to bring a coding program for adult library users. And we are working with key libraries at Almaden and Vineland branches to reach out to Sacred Heart Community Services, La Mesa Verde program, and the African American Community Services Agency. And it is one of my favorite parts of the presentation is to talk about our biggest library supporters, one of whom is here today with us. One of you recognize that beautiful face there and that face right over there. <laughs> Barrietta Library has an amazing group of library supporters, namely the Barrietta Friends of the Library and our teens and adult volunteers. Pre-pandemic, Barrietta Friends contributed 1,500 quarterly to fund programs. Currently, we are receiving a thousand dollars quarterly and a little bit more as needed. Barbara never turned us down, constantly writing those checks. We are extremely appreciative of the time, the effort, and the financial support from our friends and volunteers. So thank you, Barbara. I'll hand it over to my library assistant, Aria. Hello, uh, my name is Mario Fuente. I'm the library assistant here at Berryessa. Uh, I'm here to talk about our amazing staff. The Berryessa the library team comprises of dedicated professionals with diverse backgrounds who consistently demonstrate their commitment to our community. Our team includes bilingual staff proficient in three major languages, Chinese, Mandarin, Vietnamese, and Spanish. With over two decades of collective clerical and librarian experience, we bring a wealth of knowledge and expertise to our work. If you were to inquire about the meaning behind our branch's initial CV from any team member, the unanimous response would be best friend. <laughs> <laughs> the collective sentiment reflects our shared dedication to providing exceptional service and fostering a welcome environment for all library patients. Finally, we would like to share a few feedback comments from our valued patrons that have truly inspired us. One of our patrons, Francesca Coronado, wrote, finally, I, re I really need to express appreciation for all the programming, programs, services, tutoring, et cetera, offered at the library. The libraries do more than simply loan materials. Rather, they help lift and improve the quality of life 
for their communities and families. Thank you very much. One of our coolest patrons, Oscar Chen, <laughs> his mom wrote, uh, my son Oscar Chen liked find the flag program very much. He learned more when he searched the information about the country flag and took note by himself. Have a wonderful day. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for your time, attention, and for the opportunity to share information about our home away from home, the very the language. Thank you. That was incredible. We might have a few questions, so oh. I'm just gonna go around. <laughs> Although I'm not sure. So <laughs> wonderful, such a great presentation. But before we uh, finish the item, is there questions, comments, commissioners? Vice Chair McGon. I have a comment. Um, I was talking to him when we around dad. Uh, where he sits a little farther away, and he asked about things to do. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is a funny book. He, he went. Um, and absolutely loved it. And he took his little one over. Uh, he wanted to say, Tell him I said thank you. So thank you. Uh, and just keep encouraging that. I know when I took my little one to a, a library event with animals, I once a week will get a request to go to the library to go see the animals again. So you're encouraging <laughs> coming to the library. Well, that. Thank you. I see that person. He sits right next to you, right there. And this person right here, the no. who's responsible for the bunny and books. Oh, I love it. I love that. More, more time. <laughs> Other commissioners? All right. I would also say I heard about the money in the book program too. I hate work sometimes out in Marietta, and so I heard about it and I was like, what's going on? And then I got out and saw it and I was like, it's not a snuff in uh, really wonderful. I I think about if the SPCA does a book reading with kids coming to read and animals and books and reading go together. It's just amazing. So thank you for that and every other thing. I mean, look out just on the shiny bright object of the bunny. You can clearly see you're doing a lot more. Um, and we're grateful to you. Thank you so much for serving your community. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we are moving on to an action item. We are going to go through the election of our fiscal year 2023-2024 officers. It's up to us as a commission to identify and vote to approve a commission chair and vice chair for fiscal year 23-24. Did we do a vice chair first or chair? I think I'm sorry. Vice chair. Chair first? Vice chair. All right. Okay. I'm looking for that. Thank you, Cassie. Vice chair. So, how it that's right. Um, so, how it works is we someone can make a uh, recommendation of the commissioner to ask a commissioner to. Or you can and ask yourself, you can talk about yourself and say, I'd like to be this here. Um, but now would be the time to either request someone or request yourself to be considered for um, nomination. And then we will vote. You can also, when it, when if there are two people, even if there's one, we'll ask the candidate or the respective uh, lady chair to say something about themselves and what's important before we vote. Yes, can you check? Hello. I'm both of the current leadership. Oh, I understand. Okay. They, I'm just taking all what I want. Thank you. Right, sure. Okay. Current leadership. Yes. Commissioner Collins. Before we put nominations out, can we get a list of who is exiting our commission at this point? <laughs> because yeah. I am not positive about that. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Jolly. Oh. So, Commissioner. We have two commissioners who are coming out um, after this meeting, and that will be Commissioner Thorsten. Also, Commissioner uh, Pfizer, he is ending his first term as well today. Um, we have two commissioners that were reappointed, so we don't have to worry about that. So technically, we have two commissioners where today will be their last meeting, and that is Commissioner Thorsten and Commissioner Pfizer. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we have one motion on the floor. We have one nomination on the floor. Uh, Vice Chair McGonagall. I would like to see Commissioner Ramos Allen. Um, I would other. Yeah. Yes. You should ask for uh, whether that nomination has been accepted by the person. Uh, and the nomination that is accepted for Vice Chair, I know we can turn off the eyes and turn off the Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ann. Would you accept the nomination of Vice Chair? I would. You would. Okay, thank you, Ann. That was super helpful. Keep it down. Other, see, you guys, he was right on track. Other nominations for Vice Chair? Okay, if the group's ready, Commissioner uh, Ronald Fallon, would you like to talk a little bit about why you'd like to be helpful? Uh, sure. And, uh, that would be that would be wonderful. I would I would love to do that. Uh, and hoping that we only have a minute to do it. Yes. Um, you know, I uh, I really have enjoyed my time on this commission. I really appreciate being part of different programs. We uh, already have um, enrolled our baby in the one thousand book before kindergarten and the summer uh, June program. So we've been reading every single day and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, Bean Stack and I are besties. Um, and uh, I really hope to support the commission in any way I can, as well as whomever the incoming chair would be. Thank you. I would also say uh, Commissioner Ramos does the hard work of the budget list in twice as running um, that committee for us. And so she's well aware of some of the technical parts of stuff. I mean, staff does it, but I don't think well. You know, you volunteer twice to do it. It's, it's an effort. Okay, so we now are ready to make a nomination. Do I do the nomination? A first and a second? I forget. Second point. Yeah, so uh, the motion on the floor. We only have one nomination for the motion on the floor by default is um, for Commissioner Ramos Allen to be the vice chair. You don't need a roll call vote because there is no contest. Okay. Um, it's just I or nay I or abstain. All right, so I'm ready to call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That was Commissioner Zisser. Oh, thank yeah. you. I didn't see on the roll call. Thank you. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody need to abstain? Welcome, congratulations. Um, okay, now we're moving on to chair. I uh, thank you, Commissioner Kelly, but I also am ready to give up the seat of chair after two years. Um, so I will decline the request. Uh, but I'd also like to nominate Commissioner Vice Chair, uh, Vice Chair Magana for the chair seat. Um, if you know, I'm so Okay. Others? Anybody else interested in nominating and or? He said he respectfully request says yes. He oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> this is really awkward. This is just going so smoothly <laughs> off and down. I really, it's so weird. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Vice Chair Magana, would you like to tell us why you're interested in the chair position? Yeah, I've been on the commission since 2017, so year six. I've been on various committees, ranging from budget methods to the early education standards we put on, uh, doing some of our advocacy work with our, our foundation at the council. And I think I have some of the relationships with our current elected officials and their staff members. So some, the strong relationships going on with our staff to continue to advocate for our library. So, had some practice also chairing TV, so I think it's a good moment to go from there. All right. Since there's no one else. Oh, Chair Wendy, you have public comment, okay. um, which we just recognized. Um, so after public comment, if, the, if there's anything shared by the public that would make the commission feel it's necessary to reconsider the vice chair vote, then we can do that. Um, but we, we just saw it pop up, so we should okay. do that. Yes, if we can set up for our public comment, thank you. Okay, I take it's a calling public comment, not in person. Paul Soto, please speak. Well, thank you for allowing me to speak. 
Anyways, uh, Paul Soto from the Horseshoe. I have objections to uh, Mr. Gagana being the chair. The reasons being is that he exercised some authority that is not inherent in that particular position. What he did is he made a very subjective judgment based on something that he subjectively felt that I was saying. And what he did is he censored public comment using an authority that he did not rationalize or justify for it. Now, these are authorities that he exercised within the context of that chairmanship without being able to articulate specifically the reason why. He never censored, never censored. In a, in a country that is predicated upon freedom of speech and the ability to redress grievances to our government directly, you're a government body. So I have an absolute protected right. In fact, my father and brother both wore a uniform in the United States Army in order to ensure that that right is protected. And what Mr. Magana has done is exercise an authority that supersedes what it is that my father and my brother stood for when they manned their post. I doubt very much that Mr. Magana has ever strapped on a gun, ever put on a uniform and manned his post. So I have strong, extremely strong objections to Thank you for your public comment. Right, is there any more public comment? That is all. All right, are we ready for a vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? I will abstain. You will abstain. And any abstentions? Uh, thank you. It is passed. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. <laughs> No, we're going to split. I got it. It's going to be if we split right at that time, right? Like, no, we're going to do it in August. <laughs> we'll do it in August. What's left for? Yes. Okay, um, sure. Are we, are we leaving right now? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> so the take effect is the next week. Yes, August. Thank you very much for your week. Thanks for taking the call. Thank you. So thank you. <laughs> okay, we are moving on to item C, the adoption of our fiscal year 2023-2024 work plan. We need the commission to vote to approve our 2023-2024 commission work plan containing items that they wish to focus on in the upcoming year. There it is. Wow, that was That's great. Cool. That's a lot. Yes. So if before we go there. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? And yes, Commissioner Allen. Uh, Chair Chu, um, the final meeting of the next fiscal year is on June 12th at the Rose Garden Library. And I am unclear as to whether or not staff made sure that there was no overlap with the graduation ceremony, because that is around the same time. I mean, it's totally fine if you guys want to like fight the parking or park at my house. Like I'm, I'm, I'm offering the house to the school to park there, uh, but just wanted to sunshine that because I know that um, the Rose Garden um, is the hub for all the graduation. Yes, indeed. Thank you. I don't believe we cross-checked that, um, so we will um, we will need to keep the date because of the Juneteenth yeah. holiday, but we will reconsider or affirm the, the location. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, and soon to be Vice Chair. And I can uh, also, you know block the parking lot <laughs> it's really busy there in that period of time any other comments questions from other commissioners all right can i have a motion to accept our work plan and so uh, the owls have it <laughs> and we have a public comment okay before we go to the final vote public comment paul soto please speak uh, I would ask the chair, yeah, Paul Soto from the Horseshoe, I would ask the chair and remind them that public comment is always, always takes precedent before any vote. Just so that you know, because it's quite obvious that you don't, 
So let me instruct you and inform you that you always take public comment before you even consider any vote. That's just protocol. Secondly, this work plan, I want to start seeing Chicano studies and Chicano literature being promoted in every single one of these libraries. And here's why. Three of the most powerful civil rights movements of the 20th century originated right here in the Barrio Sasicuedes. Number one, the farm workers movement with Cesar Chavez. That Amigos de Guadalupe now, through the Sobrado grant, is going to establish a civil rights center at the property. Number two, the lowrider movement. Feminine Madrid and all the sons and daughters of Campesinos, the artistic and creative expression of the sons and daughters of Campesinos de Sasipuedes, the lowrider movement. And we put King and Story on a worldwide map. It is international to this day. Number three, the Chicano movement, 1968, June 14th, San Jose State University. While we were 25% of the, of the population in San Jose, we represented 0.1% of the student body. So how dare you sit there and talk about the Rose Garden, when, and the Rose Garden is the most racist, most racially segregated neighborhood in this entire city. It's disgusting. I, would, I wouldn't spit in the Rose Garden. So you need to check yourself. I want to start seeing Chicano studies. Thank you. All right, are we ready for our vote to accept our work plan? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any exempt? Any? Anybody need to recuse themselves? Or no? Okay, first it passes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm looking right at you. Can I have a liaison here? Hi, welcome. Welcome to everybody. No major announcements. Just every. We continue to put out uh, any library related resources in our newsletter, and we keep displaying any related uh, newsletters um, and programs and library resources on our tabling events at all events. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Happy thank summer. Thank you for all the work. I would like to thank you for all you being here. We, yeah. We've had times where our, our libraries are probably yeah. yeah. um, has not, and so. You're a consistent face, and I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. I think one thing that you said to me is before is in the commission, but I'm also a Google member, so yeah. you know, as well. <laughs> and I'm a dad, so. Why are you talking about the background? Yeah. I want it. Perfect. You were picked perfectly. Uh, chair's announcements. I really don't have any at the moment. I will say the only thing is we did do, a, speaking of graduations, a ton of graduations, and folks really did talk about their experience using libraries. I was, they, a couple of speeches have that in it. Um, and I also talked to some of the senior class folks, and what they, they did was they went back to their schools and a lot went in their full regalia, their elementary schools to see their kindergarten teacher, their office administrator, and their librarian. Um, and the pictures were, I wanted to cry, of course, my son did too. Um, and I didn't realize they did that until, you know, it hit you. And they talked about their experience um, doing that. And again, the little, I will say just one little thing. My son was senior class president, so he went and told the Greystone kindergartners, this is the easiest time of your life. You need to <laughs> And I'm like, Thanks. I'm sure the five-year-old got it. Um, and she's going in. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, they, it was a lovely thing, and I was glad to see them recognize the librarians. Okay. See, and now on to the library director announcements. Yes, thank you. I, I have a lot of announcements. It's a good thing it's so early, right? Um, first of all, the uh, the annual city budget was adopted yesterday. So uh, thanks to all of you and thanks to the council, we did see the annualization of expanded seven-day service at 16 locations, which is the greatest uh, increase we've ever had. Yay. Um, we also got annualization for our youthful equity programs and positions mm -hmm. for our equity and inclusion manager position and additional positions uh, for the increase in 
security staffing. So we'll have a security team of about 10 individuals now, which is a lot greater than we've had in the past. Uh, and also a fine waiver for seniors up to five thousand dollars. So we're trying to see not for senior, just for all the seniors. So we're going to be looking at uh, the city to figure out how much we implement that. Uh, and there have been uh, there are some other various ideas, but I want to kind of thank the uh, commission so much for your advocacy. We wouldn't have gotten. These items were talked about, and they were just included. They were just included in the budget because we argue too much for them. Uh, so another item uh, I wanted to make sure. I think we've talked about this before, but we've uh, announced to the public that through a generous donation, the library is now offering access to the digital and historical archive of our local historic record of the news from the 1900s to 1985 through News Bank, but which is which is the provider, but it's available through our website, of course. And uh, this means that you can view the entire newspaper exactly the way it was published during that time. And uh, we announced the new service yesterday to the public, uh, which was the Mercury News 172nd anniversary. And um, so it's obviously an incredibly rich and valuable resource to our community. So we'll be looking for ways to um, make it more uh, visible and accessible to folks. Uh, the digital archive was made available uh, through a gift from uh, Margaret Ma, who has been a former library volunteer, who made it as a legacy gift in loving memory of her mother, Susan Renzel Carter, who was a San Jose native and a library lover. So we wanted to acknowledge her and her gift and um, what an incredible resource for our community. Uh, next, we had a big opening last Friday of the uh, library's new We Play Space. As you know, we have a large, our, our big, you know, Hallmark uh, Play Space is at the main library, at King Library, but uh, we were able to open one on Friday at the Allen Rock branch uh, through a grant that came through Sunlight Giving and our foundation. It's a gorgeous space, um, and they were able to have a ribbon cutting and a special story time presented by our District 5 council member, who I'm told is an excellent storyteller. So that's a challenge to all you other council members. We love to have that story time. And uh, it, it, the play area was designed and inspired by the Allen Rock neighborhood and the history of low rise cruising. So you have to check it out. Super, super cool. And um, next, we are celebrating Pride Month at the library, of course. And so all month long, there are um, informative blogs on our website, uh, which uh, highlight resources and information, as well as special displays, special events, and valuable uh, resources as well on the LG, sorry, LB, um, LGBTQ plus resources webpage. Uh, the webpage was launched a year ago and is dedicated to supporting our community with links to local and online resources, as well as booklets, of course, for all ages, curated by our librarians, and then um, quick links to browsing LGBTQ IAA plus programs. You can find it all on our website. And then the last item is that this is the last meeting of the year, and I wanted to thank you all for your time and your commitment and your guidance. Uh, many of you have actually been with the library through some of the most significant improvements in the past several decades and the biggest investments in our library. And um, you know, amongst, I was thinking of just a few of the accomplishments, the increase um, in hours to seven day service, the majority of our locations from being at four days a week at every location is kind of insane, right? And that's a sustained uh, investment, as well as a huge decrease in our dependence on library fines as revenue, um, when it used to be something over a million dollars a year in, re in post revenue. This commission really stood up and advocated to see it differently as a barrier to access. And it's just successfully changed how um, it's viewed. And so we're so we're happily collecting about thirty-five thousand dollars a year in fines now. <laughs> um, and uh, there's no barrier there, so that's great. And then um, the establishment of our education and digital literacy strategy, from just an idea to this incredibly robust citywide 
program that it is today. Those are just a few things, but none of those would happen without your advocacy. So on behalf of all the staff, I want to thank you all, especially for continuing to, to serve. And I know that it's giving up a lot of your time and we really appreciate you. And um, I wanted to give a special thanks. I know our entire team uh, wants to thank Commissioner Thorson, who would, uh, who is charming off, as you know, we would absolutely keep you forever <laughs> and consider taking special legislation. <laughs> um, if we could, your incredible budget advocacy at every single community budget meeting around the city. Uh, Mr. Forsen is always there, even during COVID. Um, the liaison to the foundation, you've really just created the most healthy uh, reporting relationship we've ever had. You've absolutely set an example, and we're just so thankful for all of your leadership and support. And thank you. I wish we could do <laughs> And we have a we have a gift for you. But those are all my announcements. I'm happy to take any questions. Yay! Yay. <laughs> yes, Mr. Dorsey. Um, so am I correct in saying that there are seven library branches that are still at <laughs> not at frequent thank you. I love it. <laughs> Pre pandemic level one great. Um, so they're only open 43 hours a week this coming. That's correct. So I just wanted to say two of those are in District 6, which is the district I represent. So please tell the person who takes my seat about that so that they can continue to have a meeting. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Great. I just wanted to add one more thing because you were talking about the long list and then I realized in my time and I got to go see a family friend and neighbor graduation. Um, I think that's something that happened in this recent area. Yeah. yeah. It was, anyway, the graduation was incredible. Um, it was a great lunch. The pre presentations were lovely. The humans that graduated were spectacular. I think there was like, there was a lot. Michelle, did we have a 50 graduate? 50? Uh, it was only 70. It was a lot. And they all got certificates and they came up and got, it was lovely. It was lovely. Anyway, that reminded me when you said that. Yeah, and it's your point. Like, we have around 100 graduates for our high school, our mm -hmm. around like high school program. And there's just so many thank you so so much okay we are going to move on now to comments and announcements folks that would like to talk about the friends group announcements and updates any comment any comments announcements and updates shared by the library by library and education commissioners regarding interactions with san jose public library friends group why didn't you do that <laughs> i couldn't have my last name about it Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. Yeah, I, I couldn't catch your attention quick enough. I hope you can hear me on this. But I also wanted to thank uh, Hillary for all of the really fine work that she's done. I, uh, I know I've worked with her uh, through the uh, bathroom library, and it's, it's been wonderful. You are an inspiration to all of us, and, and you certainly will be missed. So. Yes. Hope you'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> I will vote yes. <laughs> so, uh, Having said that, the uh, All Friends meeting, quarterly All Friends meeting, will be July 29th, starting at 10 o'clock, ending at noon on time at West Valley. So we thank West Valley for uh, doing that. Uh, also, I, I'll just, if you don't mind, I'll go on with the rest of it and then so you don't have to listen to it anymore. <laughs> uh, I presented a letter of support for the library budget uh, to all council members and the mayor. Hopefully that uh, did something. I also attended the mayor's budget address at the Watermark Retirement Community. No comments, please. Because no. I'm retirement. <laughs> uh, District 9 speaking on behalf of the library budget at the mayor. I also had a real fun time. Uh, my wife took me on a three-day trip for my 84th birthday to uh, points north, and one of the stops was in Larchburg. And uh, I had the pleasure of going to the Larkspur Library and uh, meeting the library manager and um, chatting with her for about an hour. And uh, she asked if I would help find things out from the wonderful projects that the San Jose Library System does because they're known everywhere for being excellent. So that, that was a pleasure. 
And uh, I also reported on the Navy Mission meeting at the uh, Basque and Friends meeting. Thank you. I'm not going to the uh, okay. watermark retirement. Okay. okay. Thank you, Cassie. Cassie. Thank you, Mr. Sugar. Cassie's hand raised as well. All right, let's go. Is it is it my turn? Sorry, folks. It's Aaron's this week. Aaron, yes. Hi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I had to join remotely. I, I just wanted to, I don't know if there's another opportunity on the agenda. So I just want to take the opportunity to to thank everybody and and say uh, a fond farewell. Um this this is my last meeting. I was not able to renew, just uh, as you know, I've missed a couple of meetings lately and it's just not working out. Uh, to continue, uh, regrettably. Um, but I, in some ways, I, I, I really don't regret stepping off because this is the most together agency I've ever encountered. Um, and I've worked for a lot of different <laughs> agencies, a lot of different governments, and I've just been blown away since day one. And I just think Jill and Anne and the rest of the team are just above and beyond and um, just very humbling very grateful to have gotten to learn from you um even more appreciative of the library system than i was when i decided to join the commission um which was also already based on a huge amount of affection and appreciation um enormously grateful to the other commissioners um for your commitment and the time you take um it's just an extraordinary group of people um and I'll continue to be an avid user of the libraries um, and, and uh, enjoy all the different programs that my kids benefit from and that my family does. So I just want to say thank you um, and, and really a fun farewell. I'll, I'll leave what, with one final thought. Um, we have a regular public commenter who I am really appreciative of as well. Um, I've been in, involved in a number of different commissions and, and, and different um, public venues like this. And, I, I just think that these people, these volunteers on the commission uh, deserve all the respect in the world and disagreements happen, but this is the library commission. Um, this is not a police commission. It is not, um, it is not an oversight body in the same way. And these people are giving their time and their love and they deserve all the respect in the world. Uh, you, you all certainly have mine and, and I wish you the best of luck and we'll continue to keep uh, keep close to everything you do. So thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Yes, I really appreciate you and all your service. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, anything else? Yeah. No. Okay. Just want to make sure anybody else on the line that we don't miss. Okay. <laughs> then we're going to move to meetings attended by commissioner commissioners as commissioners. Anybody want to report out? You sure did, sir. Anybody? Oh, Commissioner Carson. Um, to the Summer of Learning uh, event at the King Library, and it was a lot of fun. They had face or arm painting and um, balloon animals or whatever creation you wanted. And it was just really well organized because you could take a number for each thing and then go like play, look at books, and then they'd call out your number and you could come. Um, get your animal or your um, face or arm painted. So my daughter loved it. She did not let me wash her arm for a week. It was more <laughs> than arm painting. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so highly recommend um, the summer learning event. Thank you. Others? Okay, then we're moving right back on to you again. San Jose Public Library Foundation Board Report. And, and your last one. Yeah, it is. So it's been an honor and tonight. Uh, John can be here, but Nicole Chitty, the Vice President of Strategy and Engagement, is here with us. And um, so we have a lot to report. Um, I guess first, so I can pass this around, there's going to be an estate planning workshop in August that's free to the public, and there's a QR code on there, and I'll also send it out um, via Kathy to everyone. Um, so you're welcome to uh, sign up to attend. It's at the Willow Glen Library Branch. Um, also, uh, June 10th was the family, family literacy event with Christy Amaguchi. 
at the Children's um, Discovery Museum. And it was the, the first time this event was held. It was very successful, it got a lot of media attention. Um, so if anyone on the commission attended and has any uh, feedback, um, the foundation would be appreciative of hearing um, any suggestions. Um, also, the advocacy committee is very appreciative of everyone who attended budget meetings, sent letters, made comments on behalf of uh, the library and the city's budget. Um, and so I think we'll be having another meeting and uh, wrapping up from this year's budget session and planning for the next year. Um, and so if anyone's interested in joining the advocacy committee, um, definitely reach out. I consist of members of the commission, the library foundation, and the friends of the library. Um, another really great program that's being offered for the first time this year is Read to Read. So that um, is raising funds for the 2024 Summer Learning Program. So you can have friends and family sponsor your summer reading, and it goes through June 30th. And there are prizes for participation and some fun grand prizes. So you can sign up on the library website. Highly recommend that. Um, and then also um, really exciting, Nicole and Don were invited to present at the International Public Library Fundraising Conference this year, which was held uh, June 11th through 13th in Austin. So they spoke about how to grow your staffing levels to accomplish even more for your library system. And people uh, attended from 23 states and three countries and were able to take back ideas home with them. So you'll probably remember from John in my presentation in April, but the foundation staff has grown a huge amount over the year, years that I've been uh, the liaison. So it's really exciting and they have a lot of knowledge to share. So, and I think that's everything. If anyone has questions or any questions? Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we all know we have information of upcoming opportunities on our website. Um, does anyone have items for consideration by staff or future commission meetings? Looking around the room. No go. We're going to keep moving. And then our next regular meeting will be held on August 16th, 7 p.m. at Pearl Library Ranch. Ooh, that's going to be fun. And we will adjourn at 7.53. Amen. 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 <laughs>